I'm Wes Hackett. I'm the CTO at um, Add-in 365, a uh, productivity and Office 365 uh, product company in the UK. Uh, I'm also an Office Server and Services MVP for the last four years. So I first got into SharePoint in 2006, working on sort of pre-release MOS and I've been doing 2010, 2013, and then as soon as 2013 was available in Office 365, building lots of solutions, enterprises, um, products and stuff for uh, Office 365 and our product company basically specialising in 365 only. So it was one of the fortunate few that saw the framework when it was just an idea on a whiteboard um, nearly two years ago now. Uh, and then was involved with Dev Kitchen One uh, February last year. So we got to see all the new um, ideas and framework and really have been working with the, the product team uh, on and off all the way since Feb last year, building pre-release. And then obviously when it went to public preview, helping the community, supporting the um, community in, in getting started. And now it's GA, building stuff for, for customers. Do you know what, the, the SharePoint framework today, is because web parts were the first thing to arrive, they really remind me of visual C-sharp web parts way back when for 2010. It's a web part container built with a particular technology that you sort of put your experience right into the middle of. So now what we've got is a React container that you can put your code into the middle of the web part and then Microsoft are taking care of bootstrapping that into the page. So it's a... It's a good first start. I think it'll be quite exciting to see where the team take that implementation, the extension points and um, you know beyond the web part box, if you like, in, in terms of allowing us to extend that modern UI that they've been delivering over the last 12 months. The thing that strikes me most about the SharePoint Framework Roadmap is, is the velocity. Um, never before have Microsoft been so open and so fast. So as a, as a SharePoint dev that's trying to get on the train to, to keep up, you've got to learn new technologies, Gulp, Webpack, uh, Yeoman generators, all these things that kind of, as a normal SharePoint developer coming from an enterprise background, you, you're kind of not familiar with. So, um, you know, it's that velocity really, and the roadmap supports kind of their view of how they're going to modernize the whole of the SharePoint UI. Um, and it's some really interesting pieces, but then there's still some big chunks missing. So provisioning still, you know, it's, we're reliant on PMP to do provisioning. And we've also got some challenges around branding. You know, a lot of people still want to do, you know, big RT design treatments to, to SharePoint sites. And there's some pretty big gaps in those areas at the moment. Favourite part of the SharePoint framework is a tricky one. Um, I think the fact that it's moved into modern web dev stack um, makes it a lot more accessible. Um, I mean, we at Adding 365, we took decisions to take apprentices on, uh, and they've come out of university and school having done JavaScript frameworks like Angular. We can take them on and get them productive against SharePoint very quickly. We haven't got to take them through a big sort of, you know, understanding the surface area of SharePoint before they can start building things. If I, if I was king for the day, the one thing I would add is um, I'd redress the balance between the an amount of effort and implementation on React versus Angular. For three years, the Microsoft marketing team spent a lot of effort getting us to build spars, add-ins using Angular, and we've kind of been left behind with the push for React. I mean, I understand Microsoft want to use React and the framework is agnostic to a point, but it's sometimes more problematic to use anything other than React to, to do some of the extensibility. I think I would sort of look at a bit higher level and um, make sure that we don't over overspread the amount of customization we can do to the platform. I think there's a, you know, the community at general is looking to replicate the development surface they had available to them from on-prem days. And, you know, there's some questions that I've seen, there's some commentary that I've seen about, you know, I want to extend it like this, I want to do that, I want to take over the UI. And, uh, you know, the, the product team themselves are, are saying, well, to make it fast, to make it secure, to make it 
future-proofed, we need to control a lot more of that experience. You know, the cloud has given you the agility and the speed, and it comes with the drawback that you don't necessarily have the extensibility to the UI that you once did. So that for me is the sort of key area. Just a lack of documentation. Um, you know, really good, solid enterprise examples. You know, there's a lot of Hello, Hello World. There's a lot of um, contributions in PMP, and those guys have done a great job of getting us to a baseline. But we really need solid enterprise guidance. You know, how do we make sure we're doing auth the right way? How do we make you know? Because we're moving from server side to, to client side, we need to make sure we're not exposing tokens. We need to make sure we're taking advantage of the right models for security, and also. There's not a huge amount of information about how we can leverage the data loss prevention and the, the rights management EMS suite um, alongside our custom implementations, you know, because we, we now have to be cognizant of two-factor auth. All of the DLP pieces, when we build web parts, we don't want to be leak we don't want to be the ones leaking data. I think the SharePoint framework is going to enable some of the business use cases to be solved. So, you know, the fact we can start building web parts now that we can put on a team group site um, is really beneficial to a lot of enterprise organizations. The future, you know, Microsoft have already said they're gonna talk about publishing and making, you know, sexy pages. Um, so we're, we're bound to see that. But I think um, really for me, it's still limited because it's just SharePoint. Mm. You know, we've got Office 365, it's 17 or so services, teams, groups, exchange, you know, th th there's no single extensibility point anymore. It's, you know, we're just focused on SharePoint with the SharePoint framework. And I think, you know, that will, that will effectively ring fence it mm. because our company is not just looking at SharePoint as the place to put things. You know, Teams is a really obvious one, but there's there's other scenarios where you put extensibility. The Office clients is a, is a great example. So SharePoint framework has its place. It gives us the ability to do a lot of things that we need as an enterprise and as an ISV for products, but it isn't the whole story in Office 365.